Yo, yo, daddy, yo, are you ready for a cool and chill conversation about you and movies? I certainly am. <sighs> Stay cool, daddy O. You know it. Hello, welcome to a new segment I like to call Cinema Talk with Mike Mixtape. I'm Mike Mixtape, of course, and uh, this is a series of videos where I interview fellow video producers online who are on YouTube and other video platforms out there. I figure I start my first interview with one of my greatest best buds I ever met online here. He is the man who is also known as High My Dude. He's done from pages to pictures and so much more. James Sullivan. Tonight's broadcast is brought to you by the cheesiest Ray Charles impression I've ever seen. Tonight. <laughs> thank you, thank you. This dude right here. Show him the blanket. Oh, you want the blanket? Hold on, give me a second here. Oh. Woo! Yep, he's got I'm... the wolf's rain going on. Yo, Daddy, yo, it's going to be a great interview here. What I'm going to do here with James is we're going to go into his past, go into the psyche of his mind as we figure out who he is as a person, what has become to today. He is, he's truly something to talk about here. We're going to talk about movies, talk about his education and up to his life till now. So I, uh, the first question that comes to mind is now some of us cannot remember the early years of our lives. Sometimes, sometimes people do, some people don't. So what is the earliest memory you can think of, of you watching a movie? Watching a movie period. Hmm. <laughs> oh boy. I think the, I think the earliest movie that, that I ever watched, frequently, uh, that I that I can recall, it it would probably be a tie, a toss up between. You're gonna laugh. It's probably got to be a toss up between the Care Bears movie and Bride of Boogity. Uh, <laughs> okay. I don't, I don't right. know if those are the answers that you were looking for, but... Um... It's it's interesting. It's interesting. I wasn't expecting that. I thought it was... I mean, you're... It's understandable. I can understand that. It's not the typical answer kids would say, but you're not the average kid, so... Yeah, I'm a 32-year-old kid now, and I'm... <laughs> I'm, I'm, making, I'm making money doing videos, so... Ha! Ha! Okay, that... Yeah, it's always good. Um, so, uh, what was the movie that got you into movies? Like, what would you say the movies just got you interested into going into movies, like watching them, going behind the scenes, like every little detail about movies? Well, that actually would probably be uh, a lot, a, a much more interesting story. Um, if you guys watch Cinema Royale, uh, you you probably recall me saying before that my favorite film of all time is. Write your comments below. Um... Yes, you you right there you got it. My favorite movie is The Wizard of Speed and Time, and yes, a movie I saw around the time I was six or seven, somewhere around that age. Uh, a great movie, highly underrated independent production about a visual effects artist who's just trying to uh, to make a a TV special for some Hollywood executives, and the the mayhem and the the comedy and the drama that goes on behind the scenes. Uh, it's it it is a cheesy uh, it is a, a cheesy independent flick looking back on it uh but it's 
it it is what holds it together is all about the love of making movies and that's what that's what I got out of it that's the that's the big theme surrounding it and I think uh, from there on that just sort of imprinted it that that film sort of imprinted on my life to a degree because um the next the weekend afterward uh after seeing the movie we actually um i remember as a family activity we borrowed a camcorder and we just decided to go ahead and make a home movie using techniques similar to the techniques that were shown in the film but it was all instead of editing it was all one shot and very very amateur stop motion that's uh, you wouldn't believe it. Um, so that was sort of a, a start to it all for me. And from there on, um, there was a phase where I was, where I was making, uh, where I was making camcorder videos. The next step was when I, uh, when I got to middle school, I started be I started acting out in play productions because my brother and sister had done middle school drama before and I thought hey you know what this looks like fun and it was it was a blast you know from middle school all the way up to high school that's what I wanted to do is be an actor but um what I uh, one solid hit of of reality on the on the head was a lot of people pursue acting. Uh, very few people can make a, a career out of it. Um, I was I was told pretty much flat out I I shouldn't uh, I, I'm not going to be an actor. And to be honest, I'm not the best actor either. So as much fun as I had doing it um, in high school, I started interesting myself more and more in um in stage and direction and i figured you know there was a guy there was a guy at my high school um a couple of guys uh william gord and jordan livingston uh, a couple of guys who were uh years a couple uh years ahead of me who i noticed were were looking to get into college and and they were going to UCLA and they were making movies uh, uh, using using Hi8 tapes, Hi8 camcorders, and that was the thing back then. This is the late this is the late nineties we're talking about. You, if you if you had to to put anything, it was on standard definition, uh, high uh, digital eight camcorder, and then dumped to the. Uh, dumped the computer and then you just stick it on your Adobe editing bay and go from there. Oh, that I saw these guys making a movie and I next thing you know I tried writing a couple of scripts and um, the one script that I that I wrote that I actually made something out of was uh, uh, Amber Journeys Beyond, a, a fan film based off of a based off of a '90s PC game that I used to play. And that is a disaster. That movie was a disaster for the ages. Because I walked right into it saying, oh, I know a little bit about editing. I, I've, seen, I've seen DVD extras, so I know everything there is to do to make about movie making, right? And I actually legitimately thought maybe I could sell, I could sell my little digital eight fan film at, at some point I had no idea how the system worked so yeah pretty much my my venture into Sweden territory and it um, it was a project that took up half of my uh, college career uh, I was teaching myself not just how to edit not just how to shoot but how to do visual effects and how to how to use After Effects to map stuff out perfectly, just how to how to get 
special effects to look the way that you want them to. And I, I almost, I almost got there. That was a, that was a very almost project, but, uh, it was, it was pretty much doomed never to be finished because my hard drive collapsed in year four into production and I didn't have it backed up. But in the meantime, I had made several other projects. I, you know, I made a, a video about a trip that I took to, to Louisiana to make syrup with my family. I made a video about... Um, I made a video about uh, a trip that my church took to Mexico to repair an orphanage. And I, I realized I had just sort of fell into uh, teaching myself all the fundamentals of editing. And that, that uh, pretty much took me through film school. I started off doing College of Marin. Uh, for four years, I got my AA there and from there I transferred on to uh, San Francisco State where I got my bachelor's degree in cinema production and after uh, so while I was doing that I just um, I met up with uh, with a, a a colleague in in uh, in college who basically a guy who would change my life, I think, for the better. Far, just for, uh, hands down. A guy uh, by the name of Lawrence Taylor, very good friend of mine, filmmaking buddy, and we've spent years uh, making projects, uh, none of which, un none of which have really, uh, have really been released yet, but. There is al uh, there's always, to me, there's always uh, hope. Um, actually, I take that back. There were a few projects that got released. Uh, it was just, uh, it was just, you know, stuck them up on, on YouTube. Uh, one of them is called The Creep in the Creek, in which uh, I actually dressed up as a, as a slasher killer running around uh, wearing a Larry mask, uh, a Larry mask from the Three Stooges, uh, beating people to death with a with a big stick, which I I still have right behind my I I still have right behind my my closet door here. I'll I'll show it to you. My my character in the movie was a was a hermit who just uh, bludgeons people with this with, uh, with these staffs <laughs> and it, it this used to this used to have the fake blood on it but uh, yeah and we we had two sticks uh, for filming and um, there was a, a reason for that one. Uh, there was a period where we could not find this one, so we just used another one that was big enough. Looked like it could do some damage. And another another short that we made was uh, one called Gangster's Guilt, uh, which tells the, which is more of a drama. Um, another one's a, a family film called the The Good Sitter. And um, from there, I just, uh, I, there was a thing going on uh, at the time, 2006, uh, 2007, where it was starting to become popular to have your own review show. So I, you know, to make your own videos, web shows, and stick them up on YouTube or someplace before all, it went all copyright crazy and sold out. But we're still, we're still doing it, um, and so from there on, I started making web shows. I called myself Hi Maytude, which was a a nickname from forever ago, 
And that led me on to doing From Pages to Pictures, my, my show about um, comparing books to movies. And from there, um, uh, Mike, a couple of years ago, you started asking me to be a part of Cinema Royale. So here, here I am. Here I am once again. Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, that was amazing. That's really good to understand that. Um, that's pretty much all the questions I had in my head about you know school and college and how that led into thing. All right, so here's a here's another question I was just thinking of. What in s- damn it, Facebook? <laughs> what? What in I know it, it was a thing to have reviews online, but what inspired you to, to go for uh, movies based on books? Why that genre of movies to review? Well, I I noticed that within the reviewing community there were there were niches that were being that were sort of coming up. Um, you had the two the two uh, the two flagships uh the two flagships uh that uh i pretty much think started it all in the reviewing community would probably be james rolfe the angry video game nerd and doug walker the nostalgia critic who both have their uh who both have their their own formulas and for a while, um, I was among the mass of others who were uh, who was uh, basically trying to to copy that success. Now take the formula that these guys had and and do something similar. And I realized something that by copying somebody else, I don't have a niche. I, I, uh, you know, I can't specify, uh, I, I can't specify what's different about myself from everybody else. And then it sort of hit me, um, I, I got into reading a lot more while I was in college because, you know, we're going back and forth on, on buses all the time. Not one bus, bus is. I was going into the city and coming back. And I realized I better have a good book with me. And uh, that's when I started. That's when I started reading um, uh, the frog uh, books like *The Frog Princess* by E. D. Baker, because I I recently seen uh, *The Princess and the Frog* and freaking loved it. And it said in the credits, "Oh yeah, this is based off of this book." I picked it up. I started reading and I said, you know what, there needs to be, there needs to be a, a review for this. And that's where From Pages to Pictures came from. It was the fact that I was, I was reading, I was on this fantasy novel binge, uh, reading uh, the Warriors books and uh, Redwall and the Chronicles of Narnia. And I said, I need to make use of, uh, of this new infatuation of mine. And that's where, that's where From Pages to Pictures came from. I love movies. I love, I love books. And I wanted to, I wanted to do something about it. That's really, yeah, that makes sense overall. Cause yeah, cause you get, so was James Rolfe and Doug Walker the influence on you for doing that? They were, yeah, they were inspirations during the during the early years. Uh, but I had to, as time went on, I felt like I had to separate myself from copying exactly what it is that they did. Because um, with my early reviews with High I I was. I was what reviewing video games, reviewing movies, and trying to be that that uh, that caustic, angry critic who just sort of uh, trashes uh, whatever he wants to for the sake of doing it. 
I realized I couldn't do that very well. So something had uh, something had to be done. I had to take uh, everything in my own direction, find my find my own voice, and I think I've done that. Okay, okay. Uh, so then, all of a sudden, somebody notices you. That being Stefan Elson, also known as Mr. Coat nowadays, or previously that fell in the coat. So how did that process help? You just saw all your stuff. It's like, you want to be on my website? Sure. There you go. That happened, right? Well, yeah, that was around 2010 when I, that was in 2010 when I uh, joined Mr. Coat's website, um, where I met, I met the, a lot of people like uh, Sam Fleming and Morgan Ledger, and uh, uh, who's who's been a, a terrific friend uh, to me for many years, uh, a great coworker, uh, a guy who you know I just I just see a lot of success in his future with whatever he does because he's amazing. And then there's other guys like Logan, um, uh, who I I have to give credit where credit is due. Uh, if it wasn't for Logan noticing my stuff and mentioning me to Mr. Coat, um, I wouldn't be on the website. Uh, same with Morgan. So, um, I met other, I got acquainted with other folks on there like, uh, Matt Brunet, also known as Animat, who's been very, very successful at what he does. Um, and... Uh, uh, when From Pages to Pictures came around, uh, another reviewer on the site, uh, Mike Kempton, decided uh, decided that he, you know, he he'd lend me his uh, his skills as an artist. You know, he's uh, he's a guy who obsesses over Hergé. Um, loves the Tintin comics, and he's he's trained his entire adult life to be a comic a comic writer, and artist. Which he still, I'd, I'll be amazed if he doesn't succeed at at achieving that. Um, he offered his services as a as a title card artist, and once I had that, that took everything in a a whole different direction. Everyone else had been doing title cards. Um, so he came in, he offered his services to do that. I got Matt on board later asking him if he could do coloring work. And I sort of made uh, the two of, them, two of them a team. They're very, they're both very talented and I, I owe them so much for that. Um, but here, here was also the thing while working while doing title cards i i realized you know so many reviewers so many reviewers out there they have title cards that just come up and it it basically tells you all you need to know when i started doing title cards with the with their work first thing i decided was it has to it has to be something different. It has to move. It has to have depth to it. And so, basically, what I've been doing with their with their artwork is uh, moving is um, taking it in uh, from Photoshop into After Effects and moving the different layers around. So that sort of gives you this this uh, this concept that. Um, Everything is in motion. Yeah, I noticed that. That's pretty uh, cool. That was really cool that you're being different than other people. That's really cool. You're being innovative. You know, you're trying to be very unique among your peers out there. Um, let me backtrack into something general, and because knowing you over the years since I've asked you to become on my podcast, uh, you've been fond with the genre of martial art films. Mm -hmm. How did you how did you become so fond of that genre of martial art films? Well, uh, 
I was uh, I was a fan of, um, and and it's funny you should mention that because I, uh, yes, I I have a I have a passion for martial art films. I had all kinds of movies mainly, but um, when it comes to to martial arts, yeah, I've ne I've never made a short. Uh, I've never exactly made a short or anything. Aside from aside from wheelchair samurai, <laughs> which uh, uh, pays homage to my love for the for the mm -hmm. genre, mm -hmm. and uh, I guess I got started on that. Um, I I sort of fell in love with the genre back in the '90s when Jackie Chan was uh, a big deal, and I realized there was so much. Uh, there was so much to uh, find out about martial arts movies um, online uh, that that was becoming a big thing websites were hosting Jackie Chan f uh, fan sites um, later uh, movies would come along that that changed the game that uh, changed the nature of the genre movies like uh, the Matrix and when that was a big, when that was a big hit, um, uh, that uh, uh, my obsession leaned towards that a little bit more. Um, from there, it went on to Jet Li, and I just sort of realized there is a there is a sense of artistry to this uh, to this form of cinema. It's it's action, but it's also it's also like dancing, right? Yeah. I mean, because if, if you if you've ever been to a karate uh, championship or anything like that, you see these guys pulling off these really basic moves, and once they hit, uh, once they hit the other opponent, the match is done. But it's uh, it's kind of exciting, but um, it's it's not quite. It's not quite as uh, as intricate and amazing as uh, some of the choreography that you come up with in film, and that's that's the whole beauty of it, is that martial arts choreography has been choreographed like dancing for the longest time, except um, except you have to aim and look like you're actually hitting the other person, and I I have a lot of I have a lot of uh, tough love for the guys that um, uh, that made that genre the way that it is because they not only do they push their push so many boundaries of what can be done on film, but they endanger themselves. Uh, they they love what they do so much that they're willing to put their their lives at risk to some to some degree. Sometimes somebody, will, sometimes somebody will actually get killed. Sometimes people, somebody will actually break a bone. It's uh, you have to, you have to respect what they they do just for the sake of entertainment. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. So, who is your favorite in the genre? Hmm. It's probably. It's probably a, a toss-up. Uh, hmm. It's always going to come back to Jackie Chan. But Jet Li is for the longest time. Jet Li was also a, a really heavy contender. I thought uh, Jackie Chan's deal was uh, he didn't just he didn't just fight. He also. Um, uh, he he had several influences uh, going into the making of his films, some of which he actually directed, some of which he choreographed. Uh, he was influenced by Buster Keaton and the silent uh, silent comedies in America, and so a lot of what he does in his movies is it's not just fighting, it's not just action, but it's also mixing in humor uh, with action. And that that creates a a very unique blend. It's uh, it's kind of 
it's kind of the sort of thing that um, George Lucas was, uh, George Lucas and Spielberg were doing with uh, Star Wars and Indiana Jones, only with the martial arts films. You know, because you, you look those, at those movies and you say, oh, we've got these tremendous action sequences, and then they just sort of insert a joke or something uh, relating to the situation in there, and it makes it a little bit more engaging or humorous. Um, Jet Li, uh, he was a lot lighter on the humor, although he could do it. He could, he could, he could act a little bit more, um, uh, than, than some in the genre, but it was, with him, it was a, a step towards being a lot edgier. I remember the first uh, after he made his debut with uh, in America with Lethal Weapon Four, they they started the market started being flooded with all these other movies that he'd been doing ever since he started doing martial arts back in the seventies, and that's where I got introduced to movies like Black Mask, which oh my goodness, if you if you've ever seen Black Mask. That is one gritty superhero kung fu movie. It it makes it makes uh, it 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 puts Blade to the test, pretty much. <laughs> so, all right. So let's. All right. I want to go go any deeper into the genre. What is the best and the worst of the martial arts genre so far you've seen? Hmm. Um, well, it, it's kind of hard to, it's kind of hard to really say, uh, to put what a, a best or a favorite film is in the, in the genre, because we remember, remember in, in 99, when, when, like I said, the Matrix was a big hit and thinking about it, it was, it was really impressive for its time. It just sort of, you know, it had a lot of, uh philosophical stuff in there that that made it stand out a lot of uh, nice uh, chosen one story arcs and whatnot but even looking at the martial arts choreography back now they had a terrific they had a terrific uh, choreographer Yuan Wu Ping uh, who's been doing martial arts uh, for, since forever but if you watch it if you watch the movie now even the martial arts it's kind of it's kind of slow and tame uh, compared to the compared to what's uh, come since then. Uh, so what I'm my point being is the this genre is always it's always mutating it's always shifting someone's pushing the boundaries. I still like to go back and look at Bruce Lee movies. I, he was he was amazing. But um, you look at so at what some of these guys do now. It um, it's a uh, it's a lot more edgy and impressive. I think um, Tony Jaw is an, is probably going to be another honorable mention here because uh, even though he's a Filipino martial artist, um, if you uh, I I didn't I wasn't quite into the first um, I wasn't quite into the first uh, movie that I saw him in, but as he evolved, I I was I was really impressed by how many how many risks that that he's willing to take along with his co-stars. You know, you look at the you look at the choreography. Here's a guy who's who's not afraid to. Uh, to go flying off of a structure and hit something. And uh, so I've listed off pretty much all the all the bests, but I uh -huh. I uh, if you had to chalk up a worst, I'm gonna get a lot. I'm gonna get a lot of hate for this. You know. Uh, uh, the one, the one 
martial arts star that I've always found to be overrated to a degree is probably Jean-Claude Van Damme. Continue. But I'd like to But I when I my introduction to Van Damme was movies uh, like Knock Off and a lot of a lot of his his uh, his '90s stuff, which which really even the fan base has has agreed is is not his uh, his best work. Mm-hmm. I realized with um, with Van Damme, you have to go back to his earlier stuff like uh, like Hard Target. Which you showed me, and I. Yep. Uh, even though he can't pull off a Cajun accent to to save himself, um, it was it was just a, a very fun, over the top, very well directed blockbuster flick. Yeah, that was a, a John Woo directed picture, and funny you should mention Hard Target. This year they released a sequel to that. Without Van Damme. Ah, uh, yes, the uh, it's a a sequel in name only. Yeah, it's Hard Target too. I just figured I mentioned that, but yeah, <laughs> Van Damme. I fucking love Van Damme so much. It's like Showgirls too, you know, not no yes. relation to the first Showgirls, but exactly. Um, ah, uh, Van Damme. I still have to show you Time Cop. That's that's definitely a good Van Damme movie. I need to get a copy of Time Cop because that's a good damn Van Damme movie. Mm-hmm. Um, where was I gonna go with this? Gonna go back around to what was what was your what's your favorite episode you worked on for from Page of the Picture? Hmm. It's it's really hard to say because. Uh, again, and I'm going to find myself repeating a lot. I'm always, uh, I've always been evolving with that show. for For a long time, the uh, um, my uh, my favorite uh, episode was actually the World the Worlds review because I spent so much time and effort on that that it um i uh, i i decided with that one i didn't want to make if if i was going to be reviewing a book that uh, made blockbuster movies i was going to have it be a smashing blockbuster episode and i threw everything that i could at the viewer i i uh I, I turned a I turned a DVD into a flying saucer. I I um I, I created an opening sequence uh, completely in After Effects where where we're traveling through the solar system. It was the first time I'd ever done anything like that. And when I showed that to the, somebody for the first time, I remember the response was, "Damn you!" Damn you, you're good. Yes, yes, yes. Before that, actually, the favorite episode that I did for a long time was also Cloudy with a Chance of Meatballs. With uh, yes, yes, yes. Uh, because we had, we had such an interesting process. Uh, we, um, uh, writing that and then and then uh, later filming it and putting it together, we had, it, it, it was a book, it was a book uh, to film translation that we both had different opinions on. So I, um, uh, so I have to juggle one person's opinion uh, with another and balance that out somehow, but uh, the right uh, the writing process coming up with gags for that. I remember we it was a toss up 
coming up with a, a crossover episode with Morgan was literally a toss-up between that and where the wild things are. Which, oh. which, which is also a movie I could probably look at in the future because I, I think that that turned out to be a great adaptation all in of its own. Um, yeah, we flipped a coin. Uh, we flipped a coin, uh, deciding cloudy with a chance of meatballs or. Or where the wild things are. Cloudy won. Uh, I got the movie for for Christmas. There were just a lot of signs adding up and a lot of requests for it. And when the movie came out, when the episode came out, it was it was a huge hit. You know, people people loved it or they or um or they they felt very challenged by it. And um, I thought, and yeah, Morgan and I, we made a we made a good team there. That was a, an episode for the ages, pretty much. So, that's the, another thing that I want to know about. How did that? I know you guys met through Mr. Co and friends on the website, but how did that friendship bloom between you and Morgan? What made you guys click together as friends, and how, how did that come about? Well, um, the first review that I that I ever did as a co-review with Morgan was uh, a little movie called Twice Upon a Time, which um, is is one of his all-time favorites. Uh, I think it's a, a terrific overrated, I mean, no, overlooked. You could. The comment section is going to shoot me for saying that. Um, it's a terrifically overlooked uh, animated feature, uh, which I came across on YouTube one day and watched all the way through. And it wasn't until after I watched it that I realized it. the version I watched was a re-edit that Morgan did, a fan edit of the film with... Uh, uh, with best, uh, with the uh, sort of best of elements from both cats of the movie. Okay. And so, we um, we met up on Skype. Uh, we we started messaging actually through YouTube at first, and that's uh, back when you could still message people through YouTube. And. Um, we chalked up a few uh, conversations there. Twice came up, and he heard through the grapevine that uh, I I wanted to uh, possibly uh, do a co-review with them on that. And so that's how that happened. We met up on Skype. We wrote that review together. You know, uh, watch, stop, write, watch, stop, write. Uh, we finished that in a, what a couple of days, and then it was just a matter of uh, getting our stuff shot, and um, from there on, um, not only has has he and I been hanging out, but we've also been we've been working together uh, frequently, and hang, and uh, we've been buds ever since. Yeah. Okay. That's that's really good. Cause, cause for the viewers out there watching this, I will be doing Morgan next after this, so I'll begin to hear all his spiel, which should be interesting. Cause he's up for that. Um, a little spoiler for you. A little sneak peek. Um, my goodness. Uh, so we've we've seen a lot of films. You've seen a lot of films over the years. What is going to be another best and worst? And I know you don't like the, those terms, but over the years, what is the absolute best film, like when it comes to editing, cinematography, direction, you know, that just holds a standard to what movies should be? 
and worst film being like this is this is a piece of shit like the worst movie you've seen in your life so well best of I've already given you my favorite film. Uh, okay. Okay. Although there, are, although there are better films, there are out there. There are technically films out there that are better, uh, better put together. Um, you can, uh, you can watch me talking about talk about them on my on my show. Uh, you know, I don't have a top ten list, but you know, Roger Rabbit and uh, and Mrs. Doubtfire among some, are among some of the the greats that I've I've uh, attacked in the past. Um, I don't I don't know if there is a perfect a, a perfectly shot movie. I, there's there's people that I. There's people that, whose work that I love. Tim Burton's a favorite. Spielberg's a favorite. Um, it, um, aside from what I, uh, the Wizard of Speed and Time, I, I don't have a, a, a film that I think is absolutely perfect. There's just what you're in the mood for. The worst movie that I've ever seen. Still where the dead go to die. <laughs> okay. I mean, okay. I, and since we watched that, I have seen bad movies. I have seen, I've seen uh, Desperate Living. I've seen Pink Flamingos. I've, um, I, I have seen some really, really nasty shit. But Jimmy, uh, where the dead go to die? I don't care if it if it has a fan base. It's still it's still something that you should that should never be watched. And I had I had I had worst films before that. Trust me, I had worse films before that. Uh, if if you want to know my second. Uh, worst uh movie i've ever seen but thanks to the blu-ray now it's it's probably a little bit more watchable uh zombie lake okay yep 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 it's another zombie movie mm -hmm. i gotta keep that in mind i might have to sit through that just to see how see how bad it is compared to what you th thought it was um yeah Okay, that's a good way of thinking when it comes to movies, because movies, some people think there's a perfect movie out there, but it just depends on what you're you're into. It's always depending on the person, because opinions are always different with people. It's very subjective when it comes to people. It's really good to understand that. There's a period where I, you know, one week I, I binged on Dirty Harry movies, because I thought that was uh, that was the best. I was just in the mood for that. There was a week where, where they they had a Rocky marathon on the AMC. Um, I thought that was pretty amazing. Um, it's um, it, it's all in what hits you at uh, at at the right time. Ever since joining my podcast in Maria for three years now, what is the, and I know this is going to be hard to do favorites, but what is the favorite episode you've been in on the podcast? What was the best time you had on the podcast? Best time talking about this topic, best like funny moments or whatever. What was the best episode of the podcast you, or the favorite episode you liked doing? It's a lot to remember. I think uh, I think with Cinema Royale, it's just like anything else. There's highlights. Right, as always. Yeah, there's always highlights because there's episodes that have you know certain moments that has it. I mean, yeah, of course. You've, we've been doing like over 
80 episodes and you can't remember all so but there's moments you remember and you can definitely do a moment from cinema royale you can definitely do because there's been a lot of moments hmm. uh let's see i'm i'm trying to move on beyond certain certain uh moments like butts ass and debbie uh and probably the most uh and perhaps the most interesting aspect of behind the scenes of the podcast is being the rotation of different hosts over time uh but um while on the podcast it's um it's it's hard to uh, to pick out an an absolute favorite moment it's it because i'm always just enjoying uh, being on with you guys and being able to talk about something that's a good answer it's a good answer it's a good answer um because i would this is the point where I'm going to talk about sort of the history of Cinema Royale, just very briefly with the folks, because this is all because of Morgan. This is because of Morgan, because I was friends with Morgan on the then That Guy With The Glasses forums, and we've done, we collaborated in the past, and I was like, I had an idea to do a podcast, and I said, hey, I know you're with uh, on this website with these guys. I figured this would be a perfect opportunity to talk about more movies on a podcast format. This would be my second podcast, so I'd have more experience. We'll do this together. And he shot up with you and Matt, just like, hey, can you want to do this podcast with this guy? He's like, sure, why not? So over the years, um, what has the podcast done to... Like, it's not changing the life, but what what has the podcast helped in your life? Like, has it improved certain things when it comes to movies? Or has it, you know, changed perspectives on podcasting or doing side projects and stuff like that? It's expanded my horizons a little bit. I think uh, I watch movies anyway. I might as well... Uh, I, I might as I love talking about movies. Um, when you and when you say we have to watch this particular movie for this particular podcast, uh, if we're going to be on it, I, I look at it this way: uh, it's like having a book club. You know, you get together once a month with the uh, with a group of. Uh, folks talk about a, a book that you've all you all read well it's just uh it's just the same uh with uh with this except um only some other people have seen your movie and it's 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 your job to uh describe to those who don't know um and it's a, it's a good chance to hang out so I might, I might not be too familiar with a project, um, well, not be too familiar with a, a certain genre or a certain actor's body of work, and uh, it might, uh, it might lead me into something, into discovering something interesting, or it, uh, it might uh, end up with me watching random Dennis Hopper action flicks from the mid-90s that nobody remembers. Yes. Yes. Um, for the viewers at home, could you explain what a sleeping Sullivan is? Yes. When we started doing this podcast and when we started doing these screenings, I, there were periods, there were long periods of time where my substitute job, uh, was, 
uh, was taking a lot of energy out of me. Either that or my uh, my gigs working on construction with my dad. And so uh, during those times, what I w- uh, we'd be meeting up. We'd be all free to meet up uh, at night to watch a, a movie. Um, it depend, uh, depends on who's in the group and whatnot. And then, uh, and then I just uh, sort of phase out. Because we always... When I'm watching these movies with these guys, I'm watching them on the bed. I'm in the bed here under the covers... You know, some I'll look at some of the rest of them. They're they're sitting up in the in the sofa or something like that. Well, I I just grab the laptop and I pop down in bed there, and sometimes sometimes I'll be so tuckered out that I can't make it to the end of the movie, and it's not it's not always the fault of the film. It's you know some you could show me the most interesting thing ever and I'd just be so tired out from working that I had to conk out <laughs> so when that happened I'd, I'd wake up in the morning uh, find out be looking at my laptop see that Skype is still running and uh, I realized you guys pulled a uh, a key term on me called a sleeping Sullivan. That's that's what it is. When you fall asleep during a movie, during one of our screenings, we call it a sleeping Sullivan. And it's all thanks to me. <laughs> and that's been boring. So people at home, if you have ever fallen asleep during a movie, you can use that term. You can say, I have pulled a sleeping Sullivan last night. <laughs> There you go. I just think I just let the people know about that because that is just amazing history with us. Just <laughs> uh, leave an impact on us all together. Uh, let me see here. Ah, not bad, not bad, not bad. This is going pretty well so far. Uh, what are your current plans right now? Do you have any future projects? What's life going to happen for you? new videos, jobs, what's going on with you right now? Well, for as long as I can remember, um, I didn't just, uh, I didn't just go to, uh, to college to, uh, to get a degree on and in, in film, uh, production so I could make web videos per se. Although that's a, what I ended up doing. Um, I got my my whole deal uh, for for doing that. I wanted to work. I wanted to work making making movies, uh, which still is something down the road. But um, I've had commission video work on the side, doing over the years, uh, working for different organizations, uh, some of which no longer exist. Doing doing weddings or birthdays or what have you uh, even a chef show for one for one period of time the whole purpose uh, was to take what I love doing and make some money doing it and most recently um, a couple of years ago uh, my uh, uh, my work on uh, from pages to pictures, uh, caught the eye of one Jody Murphy over at Geek Club Books, uh, who saw the who saw that I had uh, some pretty successful web shows going on. Decided uh, they were decided that they wanted me to create videos for their website. Uh, it started out with um, it started out with. Um, uh, me doing a video series, a video log series called uh, Two Cents. Um, and then from there, it escalated into a show that we now do called Blue Bee TV, in which, which I actually just uh, shot another episode for today. 
Uh, so you can probably put the link to that in the description box. It's a show where I educate kids and their parents about uh, autism and issues that are relating to it. And it's a, it's a puppet show. Uh, uh, basically, I'm hosting it. And these guys behind me, they're in the show as well. So, uh, I, I guess you could say, um, if you want to know what's, what else is coming up for me in the future, uh, there's, there's that. You could also check out the older episodes. Um, in terms of my own regular web show, I plan to have uh, some from pages to pictures stuff out uh, this holiday season. And... Uh, I plan to have one video out for Halloween, so uh, given given my uh, recent upkeep, uh, my my recent boost in um, other jobs, though, we'll see where that we'll see how that works out. Hopefully, that works out for the better. Um, one last question. This is gonna be really personal because I totally realized about this until now. What ha you have? autism how does living with autism grow you as a person i say it gives me more of an imagination to work with and um it it um allows me allows me to find a special way to communicate and reach people so that's uh, that's what my co the combination of uh, my autism and uh, and my skills with film it's how it's how I'm able to make an impact on the world and I'm I'm very happy for that. What advice do you have for anybody who's interested in going into video production or editing or even hell even doing reviews online? Well, don't give up. Keep your nose to the grindstone, but also don't quit your day job. Oh, and keep it real with your folks. That, that always helps. Any, any final words before I sign off? Mm. Um, I guess that's about it. I hope you guys Movie enjoy. TV. Uh. Watch Bluey TV. Watch Bluey TV. Watch Bluey TV. I will leave a link in the description below for that for you guys to watch. It's really decent and it's very educational. So. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this first uh, episode of Cinema Talk, and uh, hopefully you enjoy this. Maybe there'll be other producers. Like I said, Morgan be up next. Maybe I'll do Matt Brene. There's some plenty more. If you actually want to be on Cinema Talk, if you want me to talk to you, if you're a video producer of some sort on the webs, let me know. Contact me at mjwilf at gmail.com. I will respond to you as, as soon as possible thanks for listening thanks for watching subscribe for more because there might be more cinema talk and thanks to james sullivan for being the first person to be interviewed here on cinema talk here give him props his links would be in the description below check him out give him support he needs it he wants it he deserves it he's check amazing out my patreon check out the patreon uh with that uh adios amigos Ciao for now, y'all.
cut.